Hello everyone, um, I'm Ian Pringle and welcome to my uh, recording studio, my, my vocal booth. This is where I sit and I record voiceovers and audiobooks. And recently I've been speaking to some uh, new authors, uh, self-published authors, who are thinking about getting their books onto audio. And they had some questions and they were kind of thinking about, is this, is this something that it's worth me doing with my book? Am I going to make any money from it? Am I going to build my audience from doing this? Um, so I wanted to answer those questions. So th there's lots of things to learn about audiobook production. And I don't want to bombard you with too much information in this video. Um, so really in this, I'm just going to be talking about the kind of where to start if you want to turn your book into an audio book. OK, um, and, and then if you want to find out more, then just get in touch or whatever. Uh, Ian Pringle voice at gmail dot com. So you can you can get me on there. So, um, right. So do, should you turn your book into an audio book? Really, in most cases, I would say the answer to that is yes. The only situations where I would advise against getting an audiobook, where it maybe isn't worthy of your time, is if the book you have created is an academic book, say, um, or has just a very, very specific and very, very niche market, so that maybe you're, you're never going to sell more than 400 copies of that book. Um, if that's the case, then it may not be worth you um, investing the time and effort and potentially money into creating an audiobook. For everything else, yes, I think you should definitely um, create an audiobook. Okay, and here's why because it is the fastest growing publishing sector of anything at the moment ebooks physical books it's it's audiobooks that's growing more than anything else and it's mainly growing in english speaking countries so the united states of america has a huge audiobook market um i know that because i'm involved in lots of uh, audiobook forums on facebook and the vast majority of the narrators are from the states so there's loads and loads of people out there and there's um a, a lot of money to be made from from audiobooks so um, yes, if you've written a, a fiction, a non-fiction book about business, um, a mystery, a romance, anything at all, um, audiobooks will be good for you. So that, I hope, answers that question. Where do you start then? How do you do this? Um, fundamentally, there's two options. Um, the first option, um, if you want to, is to record the book yourself. You can do that. Um, you've, you're a human boing, you're a human boing, <laughs> you're a human being, um, you have a voice, um, and you can use it if you want to. However, um, you need to ask yourself some, a few questions. Can you act? Do you have an experience or skill at acting? Um, because audiobook narration is acting. It's a performance. If you listen to the best audiobooks, the um, the actors um, or the audiobook narrators that are reading that are they're lifting the words off the page. Okay, they're they're bringing it to life, and that is an acting job. That is a skill that you need to have. Then, so if you've got those skills, brilliant. Um, if you're not, maybe get some coaching and then have a look and see whether you've developed those skills. Try a few things out, and you might think, oh no, now I can do this. Um, great. Good luck to you if you can. The next thing um, you need to ask yourself and be really honest about is, is your voice the right voice for this? Maybe your voice is the right voice for something, but maybe it's not the right voice for your book. Um, a classic thing with that would be just the gender of your book. You know, wh what is the narrative? What's the, what is the gender of the narrative voice that you have written in your book? Is it the same as yours? If it's not, then uh, it's not going to work. Do not do not read the book if you're the wrong gender. Um, likewise, you may well be from the wrong ethnic background you may not have the experiences and also the truth is not all voices are created equal so um, if you just imagine the difference between Anne Widdicombe um, telling you a bedtime story and um, I don't know Barack Obama okay <laughs> just think for a moment about those two voices yeah that they are not the same um, I'm not going to comment on the differences, but I think just think about that yourself. What's your voice like? And is it some a voice that someone's really going to want in their ear when they're listening to an audiobook? So ask yourself that question. If you've got that right, if you've got the right voice, you've got some acting skill, you're on the right path. Then you need to have some equipment. You do need to have some equipment. You can see one here. This is a um this is a microphone. 
This is a um, large diaphragm condenser microphone. Um, it's capable of picking up real um, the nuances of the human voice. Um, and the great thing about that is that it picks up everything and gives you a nice sound. Um, the bad thing is that it picks up everything. Absolutely everything. So, you know, rustle your shirt, press your jeans, um, aeroplane goes overhead, um, dog barks outside, any of those things, it picks it up. So you need a good space to record in because you don't want all that noise in the background on the video, um, on the video, on the audio book that you make. You don't want all of that noise in the audio book that you're making. And likelihood is um, you won't be able to put that audio book out if it does have lots of noise in the background, because it won't pass the specifications required to get onto Audible and other platforms. I'll talk more about that in a minute. So, so you need a good space. Um, you can see in this space, I don't know if you can see around me, but I've got various things on the wall. Um, these things here uh, are, are bass traps. So what these do is they stop any reverberation in the room um, from bouncing off the walls. Um, they, they literally cushion the wall and they are kind of like cushions, but made out of special material that's particularly good at absorbing sound. Um, and you can see around, I've got these other uh, tiles and things on the wall here, which um, they all do the same job. Um, they're not egg boxes. People often talk about um, egg boxes. Uh, they're not egg boxes. Egg boxes um, are not what you want in a um, audio booth at all. Um, cardboard actually reflects sound really badly and, and you don't want cardboard egg boxes everywhere. You want this foam type stuff. And it's a particularly good foam that's particularly good at absorbing certain um, sound frequencies. So um, that's enough tech stuff there. So that's that's your space. You need a good space to record it. And you want as little. This is a purpose built booth. And um, it does sometimes let some sound in. There's things that you can't avoid. You know, if a big lorry's parked outside with the engine running or revving, then it's really hard to avoid that. But most of the time, it keeps the majority of the sound out of this space because I've invested a lot of money and time in building this space. Um, so you've got to think about that. Then you'll need a few other things. You'll need um, uh, uh, to, to connect your microphone to the computer you'll need an audio interface and then you'll need to connect that to the computer so you'll need a decent computer you don't necessarily want the computer in the room with you when you're recording because computers have fans and they make noise um, so lots of things to consider there technological stuff um, you'll need a digital audio workstation in which to record and edit your software that's um, so record and edit your audio so that's the software you'll need um, something like logic pro x or pro tools or cubase or audacity or reaper or um, there's a lot of others on the market so you've got to look into that and you'll have to learn how to use it um, so you've got but hopefully you've got all that that's brilliant um, you've got the space to record in you've got the equipment to record with go for it record your audio book and just get on with it and if you want to find out how to get it onto audible or whatever give me a shout and i'll help you with that bit um the other route is to, I guess you're probably thinking this already, is to hire somebody to do that job for you. A professional actor like myself that's already got the equipment and the skills to do the job. Um, that's going to save you a lot of time. Um, I can get an audiobook out really fast because I'm experienced at doing those things. I have the equipment and the space in which to do it. Um, so it's worthwhile doing that. The way that works, how much does it cost? I hear you say, well, that depends. Um... Most of the time, the minimum that um, I would charge uh, per finished hour, so the way audio books work, strangely, is that you get paid for every finished hour of audio that you create. Um, so I guess what that means, what you need to know about that is this, that to create one hour of finished audio, so when you, um, the, the one hour that you listen to, if that makes sense, um, can take between four and six hours to create, right? So um, because when you sit there and you start reading into a microphone um, that picks up every single blemish and problem with your voice as you go along, um, you will make mistakes. You'll say words wrong. You will um, miss out words. You will cough halfway through a sentence. Um, all of these things happen to everybody, even the best narrators in the world. Everybody does this. Um, and when that happens, you have to go back and re-record it. So that takes longer. OK, so at the very least, when I'm working at my best to record one hour, just that part, just getting it right and getting that getting that bit finished would take me two hours. But then I've not finished because I need to proof it. I need to go back through it or get somebody else to go back through it, listen to it and make sure that I have said everything that's in the script. OK, um, 
So they'll go through and they'll and they'll check all that. Then they'll say, "Oh, Ian, you missed a the here or a that there or anything else." Um, and um, I'll have to go back and change those things. Then, when that's all finished and it's all sorted, um, we need to clean up the audio. We need to make sure that um, it sounds beautiful and it also fits within these specifications that I was talking about earlier. So that means that it can't be too loud, it can't be too quiet, it has to be just right. Um, and in between those two things, it can't have big peaks where it gets really loud. Um, so you have to use various tools to, to do that, to get that to sound correct. Um, because you imagine if you're listening to an audio book and suddenly it gets really loud and then it gets really quiet, you're constantly having to fit with the volume which is really annoying um, so we try to make sure that that doesn't happen that the that the volumes are the same and in fact if you don't pass those criteria you can't get your book on audible or any of the other platforms uh, but that is probably the biggest platform that people use at the moment so um, they, there you go that's that's what you what we have to do um, so to to negate the amount of time that goes into creating one um, finished hour we charge per finished hour a minimum of 250 dollars if you're working in the u.s working in the uk, in the UK for 160 pounds per finished hour um, for an audiobook um, the other option is to do a royalty share which means that i i do all that work for free but you give me um, a share of your royalties or well, you give me half of the royalties in fact so it's a 50 50 split on the royalties that are left over after amazon slash audible and everybody else take their substantial chunk of the um, royalty so basically you're getting about 20 percent, and i'm getting about 20 percent of the sales um but you know you've not had to put in any money so i guess it's not a big loss um and i i you know hopefully will make my money back on the royalties over a seven year period which is the length of the contract that we have together now the, uh, the thing is i don't always accept a royalty share contract um some people will um, and yep, that's yep. great and you can go with one of those you just got to be careful if someone's new they may not have set things up they may not be as skilled they may not have the quality of voice and um, technique and uh, equipment uh, that someone more experienced might have so what i sometimes do i will do a royalty share if i think the book's going to sell brilliantly and if i love the book that also makes a big difference um so if i read a book and i think this is great i really want to read it and it's only av available as a royalty share then i might just take it but um, most of the time i try and find a, a hybrid solution where somebody pays me 75 dollars per finished hour or well, that's about 50 quid uh, per finished hour and that allows me to pay somebody to do the editing and the mastering and the proofing um, and still i get my royalties after that okay so it gives me a bit of money to pay for the things that are quite time consuming and I get the royalties back. Um, so that's quite a nice way and a few publishers do that with me um, uh, at, when they can't quite afford to pay per finished hour um, but they want me to do the book. Okay, so you get to that point, you make your choice, you do it yourself or you find a narrator to do it. Um, there's lots of things to think about when finding a, a, a narrator. Um, who's gonna do the reading? You might want, um, you'll have to cast the book. So you've got to look at that and get people to audition. Um, I can help you with that. If you want, get in touch. Uh, give me a shout and I can go that through that with you. Um, so yeah, this has been quite a long video. Um, I've tried to keep it as short as I possibly can, but there is so much information to share with you about um, creating an audiobook. And I'm hoping if you're watching this video and you're still watching now, that hopefully you're serious about it and it's something you're seriously considering. Please get in touch with me. I'm really open to talking to you. I'm not just trying to plug my own services. I just want more authors to think about audio book production and if you don't want to go with me but you want help in finding someone else i'll gladly help you do that um, i know a lot of other narrators male female from different backgrounds with different accents um, and together we can get you a brilliant audiobook i promise so uh yeah just get in touch thank you